Assalamu alaikum viewers, you are watching Modest Muse with Mushra. I'm Mushra Hartley, the editor of Modest Muse Lifestyle Publication for Muslim Women. Modest Muse launched on the 12th of April. It's a Media24 publication and all I can say is wow. It's had a phenomenal response. We are receiving hundreds of letters, emails, du'as, selfies on Facebook about this publication with a general feel of where have you been all my life? So we are now transcending to TV and in studio with me today I've got four phenomenal women. My first guest today is none other than the well-known Rushta Bihardin. Rushta is a madam of all things fashion. She's a wardrobe stylist, a fashion blogger, a coordinator and welcome Rushta. Lovely to have you. Assalamu alaikum Mushra. Thank you for having me today. Now, Rishta, you've written two amazing articles. You are a regular contributing writer to Modest Muse. The, fir the first article has received rave reviews about how to get your wardrobe winter ready. I see you've done that with your fur gelée. Please tell us what readers need to do to get their wardrobe winter ready and why it's important to reshuffle for winter. Yes, Mushra. Um, it is really important um, because what happens is, especially with me, I shop ahead of the season so when I'm on holiday and I travel I shop in a different climate and then I come home with all these bags of let's say winter clothing um, in the middle of summer I then pack it away so when the season approaches I do a seasonal clear out um, bring my winter clothes to eye level and pack my summer clothes away and then I find all those little gems I had bought um, while traveling and then I'm not stuck with things that still have labels on them and never been worn now you've got 10 perfect tips for getting your wardrobe winter ready. Take us through some of them. Um, the import, they are, I'll just go over a few of the important ones. Um, the first one would obviously be to, when you clear out your wardrobe, so you take everything out of the wardrobe, keep in mind what you haven't worn in about a year or, or so. Um, and anything that you haven't worn or doesn't fit that needs to go out of the wardrobe. They, cannot come back in when you repack it um, and then so the idea would be to take your summer clothes and kind of put them on a back shelf or a really high shelf um, the winter clothes then come to eye level because we did a winter ready um, piece so the winter clothes then come to eye level um, and pack things in color order because that will help you maintain um, and coordinate your outfits. So when you're getting ready for work in the morning and it's dark or you're in a hurry, you can easily see um, the colors. And what are the winter trends or must-haves for this season? Um, fur definitely, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> um, fur has been around for, I think, two seasons now. I think uh, the fur gelée are back in store. Take it, it's faux fur and not the real fur. Faux fur, yeah. Um, and um, anti-animal cruelty. So faux fur, absolutely. Um, leather's also really big, so um, if you can find a really good leather jacket, um, some really good leather. Some on trend boots. today. Absolutely <laughs> on trend. Um, and your ankle boots, um, that's a definite must have. And then those oversized scarves and blanket wraps are really big right now as well. Awesome. We're going to chat about your second piece now, Diary of a Harassed Mom, where you chat about the various milestones in kids' lives. And I know that your son is in matric now, and this is what your diary was about. Please tell us a bit about your milestones that you're going through and about this diary. Well, I think the first one was top of mind because I had just gone through the experience of sending my firstborn to his matric ball. Quite emotional. Um, it was, it really was. Um, at the beginning of the year, um, you know, you kind of have the idea that your, your child has now entered a different stage. So school started and um, they were just thrown in with schedules and um, the pressure started immediately and they were told that exams would be coming up soon and so all the dates had been set at the beginning of the year already matric farewell mock exams final exams any camps and that kind of thing and then it kind of hit me that okay this this is not my little boy anymore and he's going to start making his way into the world independent of me so it kind of started at the beginning of this year when we spoke about um, universities and going to look at open days and careers and, and that kind of thing. So 
I started reflecting and then I started thinking of when he was little and how we celebrated every single milestone and the time just went by so quickly. Um, I cannot fathom that 18 years has, has passed since he was born. So why do you say that you are a harassed mom? What is harassing you? I think any working mom in today's life would be a harassed. Um, the children have such busy schedules. Um, it, my kids are avid sports sportsmen, so and they are committed. So they play sport six days a week, and back and forth. And 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 I've got to drive back and forth every day. I have a little musician in the making, um, and then there's extra tuition. So apart from working. When I was in full-time employee, it was really hard and I felt harassed all the time. So I'd rush from work to fetch the kids to get home and make a pot of food. Lay the table for the family, make sure that, you know, that they, they're nourished, they're healthy, they have their food, laundry has been done. So there's just so many roles that we fulfill um, that I think harassed was the only word I could think of. We, we kind of handle it really well, but it's still harassment. Well, I and the readers can definitely relate because I've gotten such positive feedback about people loving this article. Some have sent me selfies holding up the article and I myself feel harassed. I was telling someone that I feel like a feeder. I'm constantly thinking of what's for breakfast, what to pack in for lunch and what's for supper this evening. So yeah. there's definitely that feeling of harassment and being pulled in different Absolutely. directions. Absolutely. Um, I think I'll, I'll start writing a few pieces on that because there's a lot of things happening. Um, and I think it helps just to know that somebody else is going through the same thing and somebody else is feeling the same thing. Now our theme for this issue was a tribute to moms and moms wear, like you so, so rightly said, we wear so, so many hats. Which is the hat that is your favorite? Teacher. I actually really enjoy um, teaching and if I can say mentoring my kids um, and, and seeing them take to a new thing and enjoy it and do it to the best of their ability. Um, I really, really take such a lot of satisfaction when I see them doing something really well and then that pride on their face, it, it just makes, it makes me feel really happy. Thank you, Rushta. Thank you for joining us in studio today. It was an absolute pleasure chatting to you. We hope to chat to you again soon. Okay. Thank you for having me, Mushra. So that was Rushta Bihardin from Ruby's Closet who wrote two superb pieces about Diary of a Harassed Mom and Wardrobe Styling for Winter in Modest Muse issue 3. Up after the break we are chatting to Ridhia Abrams who wrote a phenomenal piece on the rights of a mother in his Islam.